We have a treat for you today. We have a certified genius joining us. I'm so excited. Been looking forward to having this guest on our show for a while. I'd like to welcome Phil Barron to Primetime. He's the recipient of the MacArthur Genius Grant. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. And by the way, you were the first one from San Diego to ever receive this award. It's a, it's an amazing, humbling experience. Uh, you know, I'm just happy that the word genius can't file a lawsuit, you know, to take back its character, you know. I love, I got a real genius sitting next to me. And we use that term so loosely, I just. Too loosely. Just, yeah. You're the real deal, no, man. No, no, the no. The real deal. <laughs> Not at all. I love it. Okay, so tell us why you won that award. What were the qualifications and why they picked you? Well, it, it's a, a rather mysterious process. We don't know who nominates. We just get a random call and telling us that this sort of amazing honor has been bestowed upon us. So I had no idea if anything was happening. And, I, you know, I think the award was really as a consequence of the hard work of the students over the years who had, you know, I'm definitely not a genius, but luckily I've surrounded you myself with... You are a genius. I've surrounded myself with people who are, I think, certified. Really? I'm certifiable. They're certified geniuses. Excuse yeah. me, your coworkers, your colleagues, whatever, they say their jobs are easier because you're it's very around. Kind. It, it's very kind of them. Yeah, they're maybe, yeah, hyperbole is one of their traits maybe, but... No, uh, it's the truth. I feel very lucky to just be in this field. You know, organic chemistry is a field which I think the public doesn't appreciate right. enough and should know just how much the, the organic chemists out there are doing for society. It's quite a bit. I mean, you've been labeled by many as being the best in the world. Whoa, the that's world. way too kind. They're, yeah. <laughs> Your NG's <laughs> humble. Oh, no, no. And he's humble. You know, if I had something to actually brag about, you know, my kids, we can talk about my kids. I know, and he's a good daddy, <laughs> good husband, everything. Okay, you're the whole shebang. No. Tell us about um, some of your discoveries, because they're talking about breakthrough medical advancements. I'm so impressed. Well, I, I didn't want to sort of bore the audience, so I did it's bring a couple. It's not boring, it's exciting. I, I brought a couple of little trinkets to okay. kind of emphasize the type of science we try to do. And, you know, for instance, there's one, uh, one of my favorite examples, recent one, is this compound that it, some of your viewers might actually use. It's called Picato. And this compound is actually, here, I'll give you a little tube of it. It's not dangerous, don't worry. Okay. But uh, it's particularly appropriate for residents of Southern California because if you have skin damage and you get this sort of actinic keratosis lesion, yeah. Often the only way to treat it is through cryosurgery, so you'll need to actually take out a lump of skin and it can be very debilitating for the people who actually have this. But this drug... I have a girlfriend who is using this. Picato? Really? Had, oh wow. She's very fair skin yep, and she was it... getting the skin cancers on her leg. I mean, all over spots. And she started, you know, they would cut it out, so she's yep. getting scars. She has a beautiful figure. And then the doctor said, a plastic surgeon said, well, forget that, try this product, and it worked. You know, dermatologists are calling it a miracle medicine. Yeah. The problem is it's becoming so popular that the supply may actually be depleted. And so our laboratory was contacted a couple of years ago mm -hmm. in order to try to make the act active component in that tube, which is molecularly is this structure here. I'll just place it yeah, on the desk. Yeah, explain that to us, please. Yeah, you know, this is like a three-dimensional depiction of little molecules. Mm -hmm. And the little molecule, the active molecule that's inside that little cream tube that cures cancer is actually that identity. And what we do at the Scripps Research Institute mm -hmm. is in the graduate program, we have students who learn to get a PhD working on these problems of how do you disassemble and reassemble and to make these compounds in a practical way. So this company, Leo Pharma, that markets this compound actually contacted us and mm -hmm. charged us with the goal of making it from scratch. So we ended up making this compound in only 14 steps from the cheapest terpene you can buy on planet Earth. Uh, you probably heard of turpentine? Yes. So we make it from turpentine in 14 steps and so now they're outsourcing it to India and the hope is that by the end of the year, those little tubes will be available with, to anybody who's got cancer. It'll be filled up with the synthetic material and thereby the, the, you know, the supply problem will be a solved one. Have they found a dual use for this? Oh yeah. I've heard, tell me about that. Yeah, they're, you know, right now they're looking at other applications such as basal cell carcinoma mm -hmm. and uh, SCC is another form of cancer that they're looking at and there's a number of different studies that are ongoing now, now this F FDA approved drug for other indications, other types of dermatology. Right indications. So explain to us what it does. You put it on your skin. Yeah, so, so you if all... I put this on, it's safe, right? Yeah, there's nothing in there right now. It's like a sample tube. Oh, wow, there is something. Um, is yeah. that? <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> there's nothing active left in there. It's probably just a... Um, okay, so it, well, it looks what's going to happen like to my skin that doesn't have cancer? Nothing. So what would happen okay. is after a little while, mm -hmm. I would say a few days, that skin will sort of uh, come into a little bit of a blister. It'll... it'll <laughs> oh, no. It will then peel off and your cancer will be cured. So it's miraculous. So what about using it for anti-aging? Well, 
uh, you you know um, wrinkles. It, it would be, I bet it would get rid, rid of fine lines. It, it it is not something that the FDA allows me to talk but about. But I bet <laughs> I know that's what I was talking about. I know about it because I do to my your research. Primary care physician, yeah. I do my research, and I've heard there's been a dual function as far as like an anti. It definitely product. it definitely could, and I think the company that markets it is can would I, definitely love to. Can I buy stock? And I, can you I, can, can I, sure. Can I yeah. Up with you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. What else are you working on? We, well, we, let's wipe this out before my. Yeah, I, yeah. You know, the, if you have that. Uh, like that disinfectant thing, it'll probably get rid of it. Yeah, okay. it's probably just that, you know, the compound is not so stable, so yeah. if there was any of this, it probably would be gone by now. You no have worries. You have a lot of, you make like these na complex natural molecules. Right, so this is an example of yeah. one of them, inginal butate, originally isolated. It was originally traditional Chinese medicine. Yeah, And uh, Yeah, and so some of the other things we do are inspired by a compound like this, where students are, you know, the students at Scripps are really, really gifted. I mean, you should be interviewing them. I mean, I'm just a feeble spokesperson, you know, and uh, they are the really the magicians. And some of the things they work on are like inventing methods that people can use at companies like Pfizer or Bristol Myers Squibb or Merck. The, these are companies that the public should be worshiping because they bring to us the Lipitors, the Zoloft's, the medicines that we take every day that help society are invented by people at companies like that who usually get their PhDs in laboratories like the ones at Scripps, who learn how to do organic chemistry. And by the way, I do want to interview those people. I would oh, love yeah. to. I'd love to do a tour of the lab. Oh boy, and we could take you there. You'd okay. love it. I'm, Lots I'm of in. bubbling things and colored tubes and you know, it looks like Mr. Wizard's world. Yeah. What are you working on now? I mean, you do so much and you've got all this energy and you chase two little toddlers now. <laughs> what, what are you working on now? What's your next move? Well, we've got a number of natural product stories just like this, that the problem is one of supply. The bottleneck is you would love to make a lot of it, you would love to evaluate it as a potential medicine, but you just can't get your hands what on if it. I could find, what if I could find money for you? Well, that's what people like uh, scientists at the yeah. Scripps Research Institute, you know, spend a lot of their day doing, like, like well, me writing shouldn't. grants. they shouldn't. They need people getting that for them, and they need to be working in the lab. Well, the general public, you know, needs to have a, a deep appreciation for the fundamental organic okay. chemistry that leads to, you know, miracle medicines. Okay, I gotta ask you, how long have you had a passion for inorganic chemistry? You know, it, it, that's a great question. It, it, it's kind of been the only thing, until I had a family, it was the only thing that I found to be uh, worthwhile in my life. It was like oxygen needed, sleep sometimes, and chemistry. So it's so been cool. very, uh, I've been I'm very blessed and lucky that I've been allowed to do this, you know, field and my, you know, doors have been opened and I've found great students to work with and so I just feel, you know, very, very lucky. You know, it's kind of like that children's uh, movie, Ratatouille. Mm -hmm. You know, even a, a rat can cook and, and even a rat can do chemistry if you just have passion for it and you really like it. Yeah. A, a rat like me can, you know. Did you have support of your parents early on? Because as a parent, I would like to know how do we help our children, how do we get them focused on this and to see if they're interested? Well, I think that the key is giving them a lot of playtime. Mm -hmm. When I was a young kid, if I was outside eating dirt, sucking on a rusty nail, you know, throwing rocks, it, it, it was sort of irrelevant. I was just allowed to go out and play. My summer times were empty. I didn't have 50,000 things. You know, my daughter now is learning Mandarin, chess, gymnastics, and drama, and she's only in kindergarten. So, uh, and the brain is like a sponge, you just keep feeding. Yeah, and in my case, they just sort of left me alone and I sort of randomly found that, wow, I like mixing things. And then later on when I grew up, that <laughs> you can get paid for mixing okay, things. Okay, so my nine-year-old mixes all kinds of stuff and I should just let her do it, You right? should, just as okay. long as you know. Okay, so we live close to each other, I want you to meet my daughter. Absolutely, yeah. Now, you, you got a lot of money on this deal, like $625,000. Right, thousand dollars or something. So, what are you going to do with it? And well, it's a hundred, over a hundred thousand more than the the last award. So, it's the most money they've ever awarded to anybody. You know, it is a uh, uh, very humbling thing, and, and I, I'd say this is going to allow me to help my students a lot more by using this money first to retrofit some of the laboratory. We can replace some of the aging. You're going to put it back into work? Definitely, a lot of it. Look at you. <laughs> For sure. I mean, I mean, we would have to pay taxes otherwise yeah, on it. So, okay. it will help the lab. And you know, my, I was talking to my wife about this and she said, you know, maybe we should put some of it into a college fund yes. now because then in 15 years. Your wife is smart. So do that. I, I will I will listen to her. Take probably. care of your yeah. family. Gotta do that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, you so much. Such Taylor. an honor. I can't sweetheart. wait to visit the lab. Thank, Thank you, you so much, so Sherry. Any invited so anytime. And I'm gonna help you get the right hand. Oh,